Good morning, everyone. Hi, Jun Sang, uh, Kim Da Won, Ka Dong Yoon, Liu Sung Hoon, Rito, Song Woo, and Hyun Woo. Thank you, everybody, joining us today. Uh, all, yeah, also, I see Lee Sung Hee and Che Myung Ho, Che Wan Soo. Thank you, everybody, to joining for joining us today. Uh, today, uh, also, Minsu, hi, hello. You, you look still sleepy. Hi, Minsu. Oh, uh, yeah, no, this is me. What was your weekend? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> why? Because you have a lot of homework, or why, why was it so hard? <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. Over the weekend, I had good time with my family because last weekend was a kind of family weekend. So oh. I had a very good time with my family. I think family and friends are very, very important for our happiness and sustaining our healthy life. So, Let's move move on uh, to this class. Uh, I'm today. I'm going to talk about auto encoder and uh, GAN model. Mm -hmm. It is a little bit. Uh, there is some continuity of our classes, but uh, this auto encoder and GAN models are slightly different. I hope you enjoy uh, the class. Um, let's review our overall picture of our class. Uh, our focus of our class is to talk about machine learning models. And over the few last weeks, uh, we were talking about CNN, Convolutional Neural Network. And CNN is useful for image classifications because human brains as most important input is the images. So image classification is very important first step to realize machine learning models. We talked about the basic structures and architectures and cost functions. And also we was talking about backpropagation principles. In addition to that, we was talking about RNN and LSTM models. And these models are very useful for sequential data prediction and machine translation and question answering. The third models we was talking about was GPT-3 and BRT. Uh, you remember that GPT-3 and BRT are both based on transformer learning and there are attention networks and it helps to understand the context of your paragraphs and books and is useful for natural language processing. Also in this month we're gonna start to talk about the enforcement learning and enforcement learning is useful for optimal decision making. There are a lot of um, tasks in our life to make a best decision or optimal decision. It would be related to our engineering world or it could be related to our business. The the model we, we're gonna talk about today is generative model. And I'm going to talk about two different generative model. One is autoencoder and second generative model is GAN. And this number five generative model will be the focus of our class today. It can be used for creation purpose and generative model can create art, music, or in the future, it can make a movie. But in engineering world, I think generative model can 
generate layout or engineering designs. So in the right now, uh, nobody have successfully done a work to use generative model for engineering world. I hope some years later, our new students uh, work on this generative model to design the layout of your chip or to design the architect of a building or um, maybe automotive vehicles. So my dream is combining this uh, machine learning model with a reinforcement learning model and generative model combining them all together we can really uh, design optimal design and creative optimal design using machine learning. And that is um, my dream, probably before retirement of my uh, professorship, I can, I would like to show some primitive possibility of this composite hybrid model. And in order to achieve that, uh, we need uh, high computing power that is always the requirement of machine learning model. Then also we need some data. Some data may be come from social network. Some data may come from library, such as I would say natural data. Some data will be generated using the computer simulation. I would say that is classification, uh, artificial data. So in order to go to this composite hybrid model, uh, we have to go through a generative model today. And from next week, I'm going to spend a couple of weeks to talk about the enforcement learning. Uh, those are the big picture of my class. My class. Hi, Heian. How was your weekend? Tonight, I have to make up. You went to home or you stayed in the dormitory? I went back to my house. You went to home? For parents' day. You had very good lunch or dinner with your father and mother? Yes. What kind of food did you eat? I had sashimi. Mm -hmm. Chinese? Sashimi. Chinese food? Um, Chinese food as well and tteokbokki. Oh, top of my <laughs> precious food. But unfortunately, my wife doesn't make that anymore because after seven o'clock, she shut down my food supply. So oh. I cannot eat any more that kind of food, chicken or tteokbokki or... My mom did not make it. We just ordered. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, now, uh, as I mentioned that, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, autoencoder and GAN model today. Let's start with the autoencoder. This is the very basic structure of autoencoder. Uh, of course, uh, autoencoder is can be made of CNN or DCNN. Uh, later on in this class, I'm going to talk about the architecture of DCNN. Uh, DCNN is inversely structure of CNN. I'm sure you are familiar with the CNN. So uh, autoencoder has two different parts. First part is called encoder. Let's assume that we input image, it translates to the latent feature vector. Image could be a matrix and uh, feature could feature latent feature could be vector. It's a kind of classification. Um, so autoencoder has encoder part that has the main function is that it translate image input. It could be different type of input like music or video, but currently right now input is image it translate into a feature vector. So one of the um, function of this encoder is it extract latent feature. It is a kind of a vector number 
we don't know why why but somehow this encoder can compress the input data to a small size feature vector and so it can compress, it can compress um, input data to a feature vector so y1 y2 that is feature vector or sometimes we say it is a latent vector uh, is efficient data representations. Sometimes input image has too much information and sometimes Y1, Y2, that we call it latent vector. Um, compressed vector is the efficient data representation. On second part of autoencoder is decoder. Decoder is a kind of generative model, generation model. Later on, we will use this decoder to generate new images. So a generated model decoder can be used for generate new images. That's why autoencoder sometimes can be used for image generations or image creations. So encoder is a kind of uh, decoder is a generative network. So once again, I'd like to say autoencoder, autoencoder has two parts. One is the encoder and second part is decoder. Encoder is making compression of input image to latent vector space. So multi-dimensional uh, tensor vector of input will be reduced to one-dimensional latent vector. So sometimes if we want to compress the data, this encoder can be used. Second part of this, of course, this encoder here, I simply uh, draw three layer structure, one, two, three, but actually encoder is the deep neural network. Sometimes it is used, uh, you use the structure is using the CNN. While also we have decoder, decoder is generation of images from latent vector. So in because of that, we call it this is generator model because by changing this uh, latent vector, we can create a new image x1 dash, x2 dash, on x3 dash. So this is the basic structure of autoencoder. Now, so one part of the encoder, uh, decoder, the decoder can be used later on generator model. How are we going to train this autoencoder? We also you, you can use the backpropagation because we put images X, but we will deconstruct image X1 dash. If X1 and X1 dash is not equal, we can build up loss function. From the loss function and gradient descent, we can go through the back propagation. And then we, this is actually network, machine learning network, we can train them. Uh, these are uh, the basic mechanism of back, uh, training the autoencoder and back propagation. Once this complete, uh, we, we complete the training of this autoencoder, Maybe we can use this only part of the network generator, decoder model to generate the new images by changing Y1 or Y2 or combining different y, y vectors. Those are the basic idea of this autoencoder and how are we gonna generate the new images. And these are very core cool part of autoencoder. And later on, we're gonna use this 4GAN model as well. So these are uh, the basics of autoencoder and how they are trained 
and how they can make a new images. Let me spend a couple of more slides uh, to repeat these explanations. Once again, this is another way of uh, explanation of uh, autoencoder. Input is X space, uh, that is usually images or tensors, uh, multidimensional matrix information. And the output is again images. It is also M n dimensional vector, n dimensional uh, matrices. Usually we call it that is tensor. In the middle of autoencoder, we have G space. That is we call that we call latent space. And G space is a vector, vector space. So in in codo area, it has a uh, many many multi-layer structures, multi-layer structures. As I mentioned, that uh, CNN type of uh, network will be used. And from latent space to the output space, image space, with that area we call that space that is decoder. And Sometimes we are using the dilated CNN and later on I'm going to use that from it will be is a kind of opposite structure of CNN because the CNN convert vector space to image space X dash. One of purpose of encoder is dimensionality reductions because tensor images has too much information. Sometimes we want to reduce that information to a small size uh, uh, a vector. It is used by using this uh, encoder network, we can reduce the data size. We can compress the data to reduce the memory uh, capacity and to reduce the computing power requirements. Of course, we're gonna use the activation function during this hidden layer propagation. And we can use linear or nonlinear uh, activation function. Probably in CNN, we use the ReLU function. So it's gonna have nonlinearity. So when encoder is compressing the data, they, are, they, are, they have two uh, activities. One is the data uh, dimensional reduction, Second is the nonlinearity uh, function. It's a not it is not linear data compression. There are some nonlinear function is involved. That is the feature of uh, CNN and the deep neural network being used in machine learning. Second part of the network is decoder. It translates from latent space vector to image. Dash. So how they are gonna uh, train, uh, complete the training by comparing input X and output X dash, we can define cost function. Probably we can use a mean square error cost function, and then we can do the back propagation to complete the weight of the DNN network, encoder network, and the DNN decoder network. Later on, only this path from G space to X dash space can be used for generative model, and part of that model will be used in GAN. And these are the start of autoencoder. Let's take a little bit about latent. This, as I mentioned, that compressed digital representation of multi-dimensional matrix input uh, that I call it latent. It is one dimensional vector. I would say if you put into the images and you it, it will have this X space will be the latent feature. Probability latent means nose 
eye, hair, and something like that. So um, depending on latent vector, these original images may have different data, trans, uh, data distributions. And this latent means if this image is our face, I think this latent vector, each latent vector will represent nose, a nose, eye, hair, and something like that. That is another expression of uh, latent vector. Now, how are you going to generate new images or new uh, art or uh, painting using auto generation, auto encoder? I would say number one is first you design encoder latent feature and decoder network. Uh, these are the DNN networks and train them using images, x is as x dash. Um, of course, there are a lot of hyperparameters when you are designing encoder, uh, latent vector space and decoder. Uh, there might be a lot of heuristics, uh, background, heuristic approaches, probably you can start with from the publications of other work or you can start from the libraries and train them and then you, are, you can use decoder to generate the new images. Probably you can train them, let's assume that you train them using Picasso painting G1. You, you, can, uh, you can generate the latent space G2 using um, Gauguin uh, uh, paintings let's assume G3 is the pictures of Christ campers. Uh, each may have different um, set of uh, latent vectors. Then you can generate the new latent vectors by linear combination or some vector operations using the linear algebra. Then you can uh, generate the new latent space and you can apply them to this ink decoder. Then you can generate new art. I think that is a very simple. I have done that myself, but logically this is very simple or straightforward uh, approach to generate a new art. Let's, uh, this is my assuming that a J1 latent space set is generated, uh, obtained from Picasso painting, and J2 is obtained from KAIST library or KAIST campus pictures. By combining these two, probably we will generate the new paintings, uh, which is KAIST campus, but the style is Picasso style or Gauguin style. And I think this kind of generation uh, machine learning model was, uh, I think, initial step or initially developed, studied by many scientists. Now, uh, let's move on to generative advisory network. That is a little bit further advanced generation generation model, generative model of machine learning. This is a little bit uh, complicated than autoencoder, but let's move on. First, it has generate model, generate model, uh, it, it is the neural network and part of the autoencoder or CNN or DCNN combination or cycle GAN, or there might be many different deviations, different style of generator network. And in 
decoder case, in one of the possibility is the only decoder that was we was talking about in autoencoder, there was decoder model that can be also used in generator network. In GAN uh, model, input is latent space vector to the generator. You can obtain from Picasso painting or you can obtain this from Kaist pictures or there might be many different ways to, to generate a latent space vector, a latent vector. A latent vector will be inputted to input to the generator model. One interesting distinction compared to autoencoder is that this in GAN model, it has the discriminator. In the discriminator, it, there are two inputs. One is the fake uh, images that is generated from the generator network. And generated network input is latent space vector G. Of course, this generator network has to be trained to generate the fake images. For example, if you put into the KAIST campus pictures, it will generate some fake images. Second input of discriminator network, this is also a machine learning network. You can also put in the real images. For example, real image may be Picasso paint. And this discriminator network compare this X fake image that is coming from generator network and input is the latent vector. You can obtain this generator network many different ways. Sometimes you can use encoder. That was I was talking about in automotive or uh, auto autoencoders. In autoencoder also there is an encoder and this encoder can use to generate this uh, latent space vector. That is the input of generator and output of generator will be fake images. You also input real images. Discriminator compare fake images and real images. If this fake image is true, is discriminator say that, oh, fake, I, fake image is real. Assuming that generator is really making a good images. If discriminator cannot compare X real images and fake images, output will be one. However, this discriminator determined that X fake is not X real. It is really fake. Then output of discriminator will be zero. That means it is a fake images. So discriminator input is a two tensor matrix, fake image and real images. Output is a scalar number, one or zero. So when um, this, this generator and discriminator is being trained using the back propagation, they are fighting each other. Generator wanna make a discriminator output one. They wanna make a fake image as good as x real, and discriminator wanna discriminate this generated model X fake is fake. So one and zero is fighting each other. Two next, two emit two networks are fighting each other. And their goal are opposite. Generator model is to make discriminate output one. They want to make X fake as as almost same as X real and discriminator 
want to make a scala output zero, they want to distinguish x fake. So they are fighting each other. This is a unique uh, approach of generative advisory network. Uh, that is uh, a little, that's why GAN is a little bit complicated network. That is why I'm talking about this uh, JN model in the beginning of May, because you have to understand a uh, training method and uh, networks in order to talk about this. And this model, JN model was introduced in 2014 and the scientist was Ian Goodfellow. He is very good. Uh, he's very famous generative model uh, scientist and it was uh, introduced in 2014. My one of my dream is that one of my students work on this JN model. And right now I was talking about uh, images, images and, uh, and Picasso because, and then by combining CNN and DCNN, we can make a new images, x fake. But our, many our design engineering design is a layout. It is a kind of images. Architect design or circuit design or layout design, they are all drawn in two dimensional paper. So sometimes we can regard those are images. So in the long picture, by combining this GAN and reinforcement learning, probably AI can design engineering artwork. Of course, when they are optim doing the optimization in the uh, reinforcement learning, they need reward and they have to calculate rewards and probably computer simulation and our modeling can do that. Those are my pic pictures. But now let's st stick to this JN model uh, a little bit more. This is another representation of, this is the overview of JN model. And now I'd like to talk a little bit about the different uh, description of JN. In JN, we have generator network, generator network. As I mentioned that usually we can use a de-dilated CNN model. In mathematical description, I would say it is FG, generator network. And F is a function network, maybe machine learning network can be also uh, said that it is a kind of function. There are many different description of function. One is the mathematical equation. Second is the uh, tables, graphs, and many different ways. But it is really, uh, the function is really um, non-linear. And there are many, many parameters, like millions or billions. Probably description of this function can be only done by using the neural network. That is the concept of our class. And this FG means the generator network. Input of generator network is latent space G. Um, this latent space can be obtained using encoder network. Probably you put into the Picasso paint images or KAIST campus images, then you will generate uh, uh, latent space vector. And how are you going to train this auto encoder, uh, encoder to generate latent space? Probably you can do the uh, training of auto encoder decoder uh, combination and you apply the back propagation. Second part of this uh, generator network input is the theta g. Theta g is the weight in generator network. As I said that G can be obtained from encoder network. This is also a network. And theta G has to be determined through gradient descent method.
And of course, in order to apply the gradient descent method, you have to define the cost function. And later on, I'm going later on in the, this class today, I'm going to talk about the cost function. Second network here, discriminator network. Input of discriminator network is the X real, as I said, Picasso paint and X fake. That is a uh, image generated by generator. And this generator input was the latent space. And in generator works very hard to make X fake as almost identical as X real. And discriminator work really hard to distinguish fake images and real images. That's why they are competing against each other. And now discriminate NATO network, usually it is made by CNN and it is the function of discrimination and the representation of this discriminator is the also uh, network, neural network. There are two or three inputs, X real, images and X fake images. X fake is coming from generator, X real is coming from real, real images. And also it has weight that I, I call theta D. And also this has to be determined from gradient descent method. And we also have to determine the cost function. When we are updating this generator, uh, parameters, we have to use the generate cost function. And when we are updating this, this uh, discriminator um, weight, we have to use the discriminator um, cost function. And as I said, that it is not same. So we're gonna have two uh, cost function and they are fighting each other. So we optimally, optimally, I think have half winning ratio of discriminator cost function 50% and winning ratio of generator cost function is 50%. That is the optimal training condition of generative advisory network. Because uh, most of you are electrical engineering and you may understand what is the meaning of impedance matching. Impedance matching is that if you have a transmission line and terminations, if your impedance transmission line impedance is 50 ohm and your termination impedance is 50 ohm, it is well matched and there will be no deflections. Here is the also 50, 50. I think this is beauty of science and beauty of engineering. Sometimes when you are making good impedance matching, you have to cancel cap capacitance with the inductance because capacitance usually have um, negative image, uh, uh, imaginary impedance and inductance usually have positive imaginary impedance and they have to cancel each other. Then they have just only real number 50 ohm, 50 ohm. So um, in many cases, uh, there should be some balance of two different parts and then it can have best performance. That truth will be applied again in the GNN network. It has generator network and it is district uh, discriminator network. Once again, uh, input of this discriminator net, uh, generator network is latent space G and it has the uh, network parameters to be trained and the discriminator ha has the three input, real images, fake images, and network parameters. Our goal of training to complete this network, we have to optimize theta G and theta D with the given real image sets. And those are the goal of uh, training. 
And later on, I will show you that generator has the cost function and distributor has cost function. They are fighting each other. Uh, and if their success rate is 50%, 50%, this uh, training will be completed. Those are the second part of the explanation of GAN. Now, my class will be move on to the cost function. How, we, how are we going to define the cost function? And once we define the cost function, then we, as I said, this is a kind of diluted CNN, this is the CNN. Once we define the cost function, we apply the back propagation and we can train the network. And after this uh, is completely trained, if you want to generate the new images, then this X fake is your output by having latent vector G and real images, Picasso painting, if you give some uh, latent vectors, it will generate new images. I think this, uh, this I sh surely hope then by combining uh, GPT-3 with GAN model, probably we can compose the music sequential data. Uh, probably they can write the novels by combining image uh, kind of CNN methodologies and this uh, JN with reinforcement learning, probably we can optimize, we can produce optimized gen, uh, engineering designs. Uh, probably it may not come to our world or our, our job in a year or two, but in 10 years, I'm very sure that some CAE CAD companies like Synopsys or uh, NCS or many companies will, uh, I think, produce this kind of product in 10 years. And at the time, our students has to work with them. So I think this is a good a PhD subject. Now, shortly, uh, less, I would like to talk about then how to um, train this network. In it, you start with initialization of generator network and discriminator network and latent space vector. Initially, we re you randomly start with uh, latent vector G and then generate images, X fake and compare X fake and X real using this distributed uh, discriminator network. And you uh, obtain the output, whether it is zero to one. It is not, it is not ideal output will be the one over two, I say 50%. If it is not, you have to calculate gradient distance and you have to update generate network and discriminator network. When you are updating the discriminator network, discriminator network always uh, want to make a, a zero, oh, I'm a little bit confused. And this, later on, I will talk about the, this equation. We have to have plus here. And generator network always, we have to, um, this means the they want to minimize this output and in discriminator network, they want to maximize. They are fighting each other. And then our final goal will be the 50% later on. I will explain a little bit later on. And anyhow, they apply the gradient distance method to update the discriminator network and generate later. If the output Y is point Y, they are optimizing the generated network and discriminator network. Once they uh, complete this uh, training, they put into the new latent space G dash and apply to generate network and we can generate a new image X dash. That is the uh, training sequence of GAN. And now uh, let's talk about this uh, gradient distance and cost function uh, 
next. This is a summary of cost function. This is discriminator cost function. It has two parts. First, they want to make real image. A discriminator has to determine real image is y is equal to 1. And this discriminator output, ft output is 0 to 1. Always this is negative number. To maximize, to maximize JD, what they had to do is the real FD has to recognize real image output is equal to one. So discriminator um, objective is to maximize, maximize cost function of discriminator and we have to optimize the parameter on theta d. So let's assume that this is the discriminator cost function. We have to adjust theta d so that we have maximum number of theta d. So if we have, a, that's why we have gradient descent is plus because is gradient is plus, we have to move positive. If gradient is negative, we have to move negative direction to find the optimal point. Optimal point is that JD should be maximized. So cost function of JD is represented by this equation and our training of network of discriminator is to maximize this JD. What is the meaning of uh, J, maximum JD? Is that if you put into the Picasso uh, painting to discriminator, output should be number one, close to one. It is less than one. That's why this is negative number and I brought this below zero. However, if your input is fake, discriminator wants to make a zero. They want to determine this is fake image, then output is zero, then this log one minus FT of X fake is almost become a zero because this is almost zero. So we have to design or optimize theta D, that is the discriminator. Now I'm talking about, I said, JN has generator network and discriminator network. Now I would like to talk about discriminator, discriminator network cost function JD. How are we gonna do that? We define the, this cost function. Cost function of J discriminator network has two parts. One is discrimination of real image. That should be one as one as possible that we have to make it, that. That is meaning that this loop function has to be maximized. And the second part is the discrimination of function of fake image has to be zero. Then this log part will be maximized. So our training of discriminator network will found theta d that makes the highest maximum as jd that has two part, real image part and fake image part. By applying this gradient descent, we can maximize the JD that is the optimal theta D. 
that will be completing that will complete the discriminator network. I'm sorry, this is not easy for you, but later on, if you look at the YouTube again, and if you uh, go through step by step, you will you will be much happier, and uh, you will have much easier time to understand. Once again, this JN has two different parts, generator part and discriminator part. Generator part is came from usually auto encoder, uh, decoder part, or actually you can uh, realize that using the CNN type of network. Uh, there is another uh, discriminator uh, network that is a CNN type of network. And by finding the generator and discriminator, uh, we can really generate the fake images that are almost the same as uh, real image. That is the case when the winning date of generator is 50% and discriminator is 50%. And discriminator, how are we going to define the cost function of JD? Later on, we have to also define the cost function of the generator network. And here, um, we define uh, this is the generator network cost function, and we have to optimize the parameters of discriminator network to make as high as possible. On the other hand, this is the cost function of generator. Generate, we have to design the generator network so that it has to minimize, that means the it has to as close as possible to one. That means fake image, X fake discriminator doesn't distinguish whether it is real or fake. Then output will be one and um, then one minus one is really, uh, really this minus infinite. So they want to minimize the a cost function, J. So if you make a very good fake images, discriminator output will be one, then log one minus one will be minus infinite. So generator network has to be trained so that this uh, cost function of generator becomes minus infinite. So generator cost function works very hard to make this cost function as small as possible. Meanwhile, distribution cost uh, network will be trained so that this discriminator cost function is becoming as high as possible. Let's move on a little bit further. This is, uh, this is the graphical representation of cost function of discriminator. Discriminator has the two parts. One is the first part A, second part is B. First part of A is a logarithm function and part two is this logarithm function. Inside discriminator network also two part is fighting each other. And the best solution is that this becoming half and this becoming half, this point and that point. These two function is also fighting each other. An optimal point is that um, this and half and half. Half and half, this will be maximum value. That is the requirement of training of discriminator network. And let's move on to um, image uh, matrix image space. If you optimize the discriminator network and generator network, and if you have two images and the probability distribution of real image and fake image will be identical. 
this is image space and this is probability two images has same probability distributions and then of course you have many different images maybe 100 different images but for each distributions uh, if the probability distribution will be the same i i would say training of discriminator network and generator network is completed this is different description of mathematicians to say that this is the condition of optimization another way of optimal uh condition is that i did myself we have to optimize best uh, distribution network actually fd is the deep neural network first part is the real part second part is the fake part they are fighting each other if i uh, make a distrib uh, derivatives of cost function with this uh, network and derivative of low function is one of fd and derivative of one minus fd is is equal to one minus fd minus come from here and by rearranging these equations we i obtain that optimal condition could be derivative of this is becoming zero then i found that this three discriminator function is becoming half that is 50 percent that is the another representation of that x is equal to FD, that is the condition of discriminated network optimal and the generated network optimal. That is the another representation is the uh, probability distribution is the same. And another representation is the in terms of graph, this become half and this become half. That is the condition of this 50%. And the key feature of GAN model is that uh, discriminated network and uh, generated network is fighting each other and they optimize 50% and 50%. And that kind of philosophy is designed into this cost function. Explanation will be very long and a little bit complicated, but how Ian Goodfellow designed these two cost functions? He thought that to make a best design, two parts has to compete constructively. And he represented those concepts and philosophy using this log function. Why he used log function? Because of, you remember that if we use the entropy kind of concept, training will be very fast because derivative will be very fast. So it will have, it will go to the optimal point, point very fast compared to linear or mean square error function. So that's why he chose log function and he defined this too. I think those are the important part of uh, GAN. Now, in shortly, I'm gonna give you an example to show how to make a generator and discriminator. This is one example of discriminator network, a generator network. It is a kind of decoder or decoder. And DC GAN is coming from deep convolution GAN. It was introduced on, on the paper 2016, a few years ago. The latent vector space is just 100, not large number. Probably if I want to make a really a good generative model, probably it has to be million or billions. At the start, it has a fully connected layer. 
1000 uh, latent space vector has to be connected to four by four and each bit is 1024 bits I'm, I'm i'm not very sure on this probably each information of one bit of in latent space vector may have two 1024 information that is 10 bit and is fully connected then they have four or oh, four four by four image this latent space is convoluted to four four by four images and then depth of this uh, vector uh, image was 1024 and then the size of vector is enlarged by twice. It is reverse of the convolution. You remember that, that in CNN, input image is reduced using the convolution operations. The opposite convolution is called de uh, deconvolution, dilated convolution. Then size of four by four is enlarged by eight by two and the 1024 is reduced by five by five, 520 depth probably two matrix can be added together or there might be many different ways to them gradually by applying the convolution operation eight by eight matrix size is enlarged to 16 by 16 then five depth of this uh, matrix information is now 256 and then in the next step, it is in nice 32 by 32 and depth has to be, depth was changed 128. And the size of image is finally 64 by 64. And the depth was three, three, I guess, RGB. So anyway, the, in each operations, we have W matrix, W matrix and W matrix. Uh, of course, during the back propagation, we can, um, optimize this uh, weight matrix and you remember that um, this generator network is optimized using this gradient distance uh, cost function I introduced just before and we want to minimize this means that we have to design this generator uh, this is x fake images and discriminator doesn't figure out whether this is real or fake so output will be almost one then this log uh, of one minus one will be almost minus infinite we have to optimize these parameters using the back propagation so that cost function of these images uh, has to be minimized uh, that is the dc again architecture and discriminator meanwhile has CNN type of network and we, we have training sets and uh, Picasso painting or this is Kyber, Kyber uh, images. So input of CNN has two different images and they apply convolution, convolution, convolution and the fully connected layer. Finally, it will output will be scalar number whether it will be one or zero. When you are training this CNN network, you will have to apply this discriminator back propagation of cost function equation. And uh, I would like to a discriminator network in one possibility is that uh, image is 64 by 64 by applying convolution, it will be reduced 32 by 32 by applying convolution and pulling uh, operation it will be changed to 16 by 16 and finally it will have a uh, scalar number there might be many variations of this discriminated network and uh, generator networks so um, this is the end of uh, my class today and let me um, summarize the, my class today um, machine learning network can also work for creation purpose and GAN as one of the network. It has two parts, generator part 
and the discriminator part. And we define the cost function of generator network and we define the uh, cost function of a discriminator network and generator network. By putting into the latent space and training set, generator network and discriminator network will fight each other and they will reach a point of network optimization, which has 50% winning data of discriminator network and 50% of winning data of generator network. Generator network is usually made of DCNN type of network and the discriminator work is, is made of CNN type of network. Uh, this is a little bit complicated work, but I'm sure that you have some good background of machine learning method of training method. I'm sure that you enjoyed my class today. Thank you for your kind attention.